Hey friends, welcome to another Circular Motion with me, your lovely host, Paul Cook. And I'm going to start that again because that was just absolute. Hey friends, how are we all? I hope you're well. Welcome to another Circular Motion video. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you're new, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That would be amazing. And leave a comment and don't forget to tickle the notification bell. If, uh, sorry, I've got a hair in my eye. If, um you're returning for more you are just absolutely awesome thank you so much i really really do appreciate it uh, it's nice to know that there are other people out there that share the same kind of passion and interest in in this kind of thing that i do so brilliant thank you i'm gonna crack straight on but before i do uh i got uh, i had an interesting comment if, like a week before last in the last lot of videos um because i you know i, I I'm honest about what I like and what I don't like and uh, because I'm not a fan of Dylan and Clapton I have a lot to learn apparently which you know I appreciate and the Beatles I don't like the Beatles either I do like the Beatles I like some of the Beatles I've grown to love the Beatles um, but I like some Clapton stuff and I like some Dylan stuff but I don't like all of it you know I'm not going to say yeah everything they do is absolutely brilliant simply because they are who they are um, and that was kind of like the the foundation of my response. I, I appreciate their talent and I appreciate, you know, people's place in the, the pantheon of, of music legend. But I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, Dylan is awesome just because, you know, he's who he is and for what he's done. But, you know, he's, he's done a great job. Captain's done a great job. Captain in his heyday was, a, was an amazing guitarist. There's no two ways about that. He's written some great songs. Uh, most bands have got you know a couple of songs that, that I can find something to like about uh, but we all like what we like uh, opinions are like assholes everyone's got one and we all think everyone else is stinks but I just like listening to music so and this is what we're going to talk about now music and records so without further ado I've got uh, again going through my dad's record collection that he kindly gave to me I've got uh some more videos coming out. I'm going to do another seven inch single deep dive and I've got a few new records because I found a new record shop but more about that in, in another video and I, I, I know I mentioned it in the last lot of videos Fly, uh, I've got a bit of a channel announcement and I, I'll do that soon as well I just need to be able to spend some time to do a bit of working out but stay tuned anyway crack on Paul because you're waffling Okay then, so uh, six records to get through. I'm going to start off with another Marble Arch release. Donovan, what's been did and what's been hid. So this is a re-release. Um, so this is a 65 album originally, and this is a 69 reissue on the Marble Arch label. And it's got Josie to sing for you, Keep On Trucking, uh, Catch The Wind, The Alamo, Cutting Out, uh, Gold Watch Blues, uh, You're Gonna Need Somebody On Your Bond, Tangerine Puppet, Rambling Boy. And this is his debut album. This is a re-release of his debut album. And it was released not long before or after his 19th birthday, apparently, which is phenomenal. And it's a great little album. It is. It's really nice. It's very folky. Um, it's got Brian Locking on bass, Skip Allen on drums, and the kazoo player is Gypsy Dave, which is great. Um, yeah, it's really nice. It's a really nice recording. Um, it, it sounds, you know, <sighs> it's full of heart and soul is the best way I can I can describe it. It is, it is, and, it, and it's an album that I put it on. Not expecting much again, and I was pleasantly surprised. And you know, I've listened to it a few times, and I'll it'll be an album that I will dig out again to listen to. So if you get a chance to, to give that a go, certainly certainly check it out. Uh, moving on, we've got Joni Mitchell, Ladies of the Canyon. Uh, that is a great cover. I just love the simplicity of it. Um, it's on the reprise label it's got all the lyrics on the inside on the gatefold like the donovan and, and like most of my dad's records it, it's in great condition it sounds practically brand new um this was her 
third studio album and it's probably a, a one of the sort of most memorable outside of uh one with the blue cover i can't remember the name of it now i've got it over there the one with the river on which is a phenomenal track anyway this one called big yellow taxi woodstock and the circle game which were like three really sort of big hits for her um this is an original 1970 copy from what i can tell and yeah if you get a chance to listen to it again she's got a voice which is just it is just phenomenal um you know it, it you just close your eyes and listen to this and it just takes you away and you know if you get a chance to listen to this even if it's just on like streaming or whatever then i can't recommend it enough um and what i like about Joni and sort of Neil Young and people like Donovan and Dylan is they do write stories. They're not just like, you know, like you listen to a lot of stuff and it's just first chorus, first chorus, and it's just like like Kiss. It's just basically most of the songs are singing about their dick or putting their dick in something. Uh, this is it's just, you know, it is poetry set to music, essentially. That's my thoughts anyway. Um, if you disagree, if you agree, let me know in the comments. That would be fantastic. Next, we have Mr. Roderick of Stewart and Atlantic Crossing. Now, this was his sixth studio album. This is an original 1975 pressing. The glue seems to have come a little bit unglued, sadly. Uh, it's not a great full sleeve. But other than that, I mean, the vinyl is in absolute pristine condition. And I remember... Um, looking at this album in my dad's collection when I was but a wee boy. Um, so to actually have this album now is quite, it, I don't know, gives me goosebumps really in a way. I remember like holding it, I just remember this and it being about, I don't know, I was in about six or seven, seven at the time, eight even. Um, and it was, you know, it was mysterious to a young boy like myself. Uh, but it's a great album. It is a great album. Uh, we've got... I don't want to talk about it on the slow side. Um, it's not the spotlight. This old heart of mine. Still love you. And Sailing, obviously, which was a phenomenal hit for him back in the day. And on the fast side, I cannot read this. Uh, real time loser. Mr. Right... Oh, I can't, I can't read it. It's too like who put red writing on a black background in a thin font. Anyway, um, this was his sixth studio album, and the Atlantic Crossing bit kind of refers to him leaving the shores to go and live actually over in America. Um, because back in the 70s, if you were in over a certain threshold, you were paying like 80% tax or more. So, yeah, I like how he's got like a little Scottish flag in there, it's good. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is. It is a great album, you know. I know he's uh, not a joke now, but he's a bit of a like a cabaret act now, a bit of a club term, like a Vegas residency type thing. But back in the day, you know, he was he was a hell of an artist, really. He was. He was. He deserves uh, a lot of credit. Moving on, we have two days away. Elkie Brooks breakout or breakthrough album um mostly produced by Libra and Stoller uh and they play on a lot of the tracks as well um love potion number nine which is a, a great track and yeah can I put in your clothes spirit land sunshine after the road Pearl, pearls a singer which is a song that takes me back to to the 80s at least um I just remember hearing it on the radio maybe even late 70s this is a 77 release this is a, again an original pressing uh, as you can see, glue they used in the mid to late seventies wasn't great because they all seem to have been like coming apart, which isn't very good. Um, do right, woman, do right, man. Mojo, Hannah, you did something for me. Night bird and saved, and and it is, it is a great album. Uh, what did I write down about it? It was a second album uh, produced by, or not produced, but mastered by the inimitable um, mighty Bob Ludwig at Master Disc. Uh, and it does sound as you'd expect. It does sound really nice. It's a really nice pressing. 
Uh, I don't know what this little tin is on the front there. Dad, if you're watching, maybe you can tell us. He does watch, but he watches them on his TV, so he can't comment. Um, so, moving on, we've got Carly Simon. I've got quite a few Carly Simon albums now, actually. I had a few before I got my dad's collection, and I've got more now that I've got his collection. I think I've got her first album somewhere, which is really good, but she looks quite good for her age there. And she's looking quite foxy on the back there. So, coming around again, uh, this is a 1987 album, and it's got that kind of 80s look about it. Uh, it's, what have I got written down about this one? The 13th studio album, the first and last track coming around again, and Itsy Bitsy Spider. Um, were written for a film called Heartburn, is it Heartburn? Yes, Heartburn. Um, and yeah, it was a, a reasonable sort of like hit for her, um, particularly Itsy Bitsy Spider. We've got Gimme All Night, As Time Goes By, Do The Walls Come Down, It Should Have Been Me, The Stuff That Dreams Are Made Of, Hot Girls, You Have To Hurt, All I Want Is You, I Hold On To What You've Got, and Itsy Bitsy Spider. And yeah, it's all right. It's got that sort of shitty 80s, over compressed production on it. It doesn't sound as good as say the Elkie Brooks or definitely not as good as the uh, uh, Johnny Mitchell um, or the Rod Stewart, but it's it's decent enough. It's decent enough. It's got a little bit of punch in, in sort of the lower end, which is nice. And finally, finally for this batch, we have Mr. Leonard Cohen and Leonard Cohen Live Songs on the CBS label. Again, this is uh, an original original pressing. So this was his first live album, and it was his first album in three years since Scenes From A Room, apparently. And uh, this is an original 73 pressing. Now, for some reason, it has Tonight Will Be Fine, Lots Of Love from Liz and Steve, and Some Kisses, you can see that there a bit mental. I uh, have no idea what that is. Uh, again, if you're watching Dad and you can shed any light on onto what that's all about, that would be great. Um, weird because it's got the track listing on the front of the album. It's kind of, it's a very high like, cut price album. Um, on the inner sleeve, it's got that little print there, which is the Book and Record Exchange from York, Lowe's Gate. Interesting. Uh, again, you know, another one that the glue uh, fails bizarrely. Um, so transfiguration, that's what occurred the night of 13th of December. Since then, I am not just a human being. I am inhabited by God and love bleeds and burns within me. But what caused the transfiguration was the mad mystic hammering of your body upon my body. Your soul entered mine and then some union took place that almost killed me with its intensity. I cannot justify my outrageous claims. I can only relate blah, blah, blah. The writing is from the work of Daphne Richardson, 1939 to 1972. So yeah, on the front, it's got the, the track listing um, on one side of the, the cover. And on the other side, it tells you who the musicians were uh, from 1972 and 1970. So it's recorded at two separate, two separate gigs. Ron Cornelius, Pete Marshall, David O'Connor, Bob Johnston, Leonard Cohen. Uh, Donald Washburn, Jennifer Warren, Ron Cornelius, Charlie Daniels, Electric Bass and Fiddle. So I'm guessing that's the Charlie Daniels of Charlie Daniels band, The Devil Went Down to Georgia fame. Elkin Fowler on banjo and guitar. Bob Johnson, Leonard Cohen again, Aileen Fowler and Colin Hanney. Now this was a flop. It bombed. It didn't do well at all, apparently. Um, but it's actually... It's quite an odd little album because you don't know it's a live album unless somebody told you it was a live album. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know it was a live album. So we've got Minute Prologue, London, uh, Passing Through London, You Know Who I Am from Brussels, Bird on the Wire, Paris, Nancy, London, and Improvisation from Paris. So they were all in 1972. Story on side two, we've got the story of Isaac from Berlin in 72. Please Don't Pass Me By, A Disgrace, London 70, Tonight Will Be Fine, Isle of Wight 70, and then finally Queen Victoria, Room in Tennessee, 1972. Um, so yeah, produced by Bob Johnson, engineered by Bob Potter, and the cover photography was by Mr. Bob, uh, no, S.B. Elrod. Um, it, it is really good. It, the, the recording and, and the actual sort of pressing are, are really, really nice. I, I liked it. I, I listened to it a couple of times because I... As you know, 
I work just there um, through that door and so I just put this on and I can listen to music uh, and that's like the great thing about working from home um, I don't have to sit and listen to my iPod or listen to some streaming I can actually put this stuff on and that's that's just fantastic and yeah it, it's a great album um, and I've got a couple more than the coin albums uh, in the collection to get to and I'll, I'll be giving them a, a good blast too um, so yeah thoroughly thoroughly recommend so you know six six great albums there uh, six great albums uh, didn't expect to like the Donovan as much as I did um, I knew I mean I like Blue by Johnny Mitchell that's, that's a phenomenal album so I was really looking forward to listening to that one and uh, I am an unashamed Rod Stewart fan all his early stuff I absolutely uh, I really really do dig it man um, the Elkie Brooks was a surprise for me so I didn't expect to like that as much as I did um, the Carly Simon was okay it wasn't brilliant but it was it was good and like I do like I think Your Sylvain is one of the best songs written um, sort of in the 70s it's, it's a phenomenal phenomenal track uh, and that Cohen record was also a pleasant surprise I wasn't expecting much because I'm not really familiar with uh, Cohen's work so um, that was I expected it to be a challenging listen but it wasn't I really really did enjoy it um, and I've listened to another one since um, and I'll talk about that probably in the in the next um, hot wax when I do albums again so yeah um, that is that thank you for joining me like I say uh, I've got some 70 singles all picked out to go through uh, I shall be sharing those with you shortly too and I've got some new records, but they're new old records. So they're old records, but they're new. One of them is definitely new to me. Um, two of them are kind of just refilling records, refilling gaps that I created when I got rid of my records previously. So what are they? You'll have to join me to find out. Um, and yeah, I am going to announce something about the channel coming up shortly, but um, you'll have to wait and see what that is. Uh, but in, anyway, until next time, thanks for joining me. If you've got any suggestions for records I should check out, please, please, please leave me a comment down below. If you've enjoyed what you, you've seen, please hit the like button. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, stay safe and keep listening to records. Take care.